this part of the video will focus on giving you an introduction to Abacus CAE environment and I will introduce you to different areas of Abacus CAE itself and how you can really build a simple model uh, in Abacus CAE. So the learning outcome from this uh, session would be you will gain knowledge and understanding of Abacus CAE environment you, and then we will try to set up and run a very basic model so that you get an idea how the whole environment really works and how you can see the results out of it so it will give you an overall flavor of how Abacus graphic user interface really works but before jumping into those details just to give you a general steps which are required for an, any FE analysis so whether you're doing it using Abacus or any other FE software then you have to start with a pre-processing phase where you basically make some assumptions construct the geometry apply the loading etc select the type of analysis you're going to do and then you run it and when you press the run button you basically ask the solver of that program to solve the problem itself and give you a kind of a solution that's called the solution phase once you have got the solution finished this means now you have an output from your model or simulation so now you have to post process the data and these are that's why these three steps are very crucial and are always present in any FE, FE analysis which you are performing again general steps for any FE analysis can be many but in my opinion these could be the more important one the step one is idealization where you have to make some assumptions to reduce the computational time so you need to find a compromise between the computational time the accuracy of your model and the results you're going to get so for example you cannot always start with a 3d problem so you should start thinking about modeling it in a 2d or two and a half d analysis so again i will briefly touch base on those but if you are more interested in that then you can look into my other videos on uh, introduction to fe so the second step would be then you construct the geometry or part and then you discretize the continuum itself so you can, you basically divide your geometry into small elements or segments which are called elements in abacus which are connected by nodes and again based on your assumption you can have 2d elements 3d elements or two and a half d elements again i will come back to that what i mean by two and a half d once we are in more more into this this program itself and then again the size of the elements etc will will highly influence your results and computational time so it's very important that you select a mesh which will give you a reasonable result and finishes or completes itself in reasonable amount of time so these are some of the things you have to consider and again we will look into that as we move on so once you are done with all the geometrical assumptions and discretization by dividing your geometry into elements you then have to select a shape function again there is I have a detailed lecture on that so have a look at that if you are interested in YouTube but in this case you can have polynomial interpolation functions for those who have already gone through the courses or who have an idea on that so you can use linear elements or linear interpolation functions you can use quadratic ones and again depending on the shape of your elements in the model you can select different types of functions for that so Again, there is a whole theory on that. I'm not going to go into the detail and not going to bore you on that. So I will leave it until this point. Then you move to the next step where you have to define the elemental properties. And this is another step which you have to do always in any FE analysis. So you have to tell the software that each element has with what type of material properties there. So for example, if I have a metallic material then I might have to define the elastic properties and plastic properties but if I'm dealing with a composite or a ceramic then I can only live with elastic properties and then again in elasticity or plasticity you have to see if it's isotropic and isotropic etc so again these are all there and you need to really define those so again this is a very big arena and we will I will just show you how to define the properties rather than discussing the concepts on material properties etc so once you are at the level where you have defined the material properties and so and the solver or, or our FE software knows what material each part is made up of then you basically apply loading and boundary conditions based on your physical problem and then you tell the software now please solve it for me so in every case you have to submit the job and then it will use different types of solvers some are listed here as well 
and find the solution for you which could be stresses strain temperatures pressures whatever you are looking after and then at the end once it's finished then you need to really understand what is the output out of it so you have to analyze the data which where you use abacus post processor to visualize all the data or results out of it so for those of you who are not familiar with finite element methods or its theory i will be using a lot of jargons during these lectures or videos so i would recommend that please go through my lecture notes on introduction to finite element methods where i briefly touch base on all those terms and terminologies in a theoretical manner so that might be helpful for you to understand what i am talking about when we move when we go much more deeper into the abacus software and running some jobs etc so now it's time to move to the real software now it's enough of the boring stuff and see how abacus ca looks like Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain or give you an introduction on Abacus CAE. So when you when you open Abacus CAE, you basically see this window on the screen. You can start with a standard analysis or explicit analysis, or you can do with electromagnetic modeling as well. Other than that, you can also open a database, which is basically an output database, which is written once you have run a job in Abacus. You can run some scripts so if you've done some python script and you want to run it rather than making your own model you can do that or you can start a tutorial as well it also gives you a list of most recent files in my case i'm going to go and let's say if i'm going to start with a standard which is a static analysis or an explicit analysis i'm going to click on this so once i've done that i'm in the main ce window or environment on the left hand side here what you see is basically a model tree and that model tree is can can be used to do all the steps which are required to construct a model in abacus cae so you can create a part you can define material properties you can define sections if you have different sections for different material properties you can assemble everything together and then you can define what sort of analysis you're going to do for example static or dynamic or explicit you can also look for specific variables which you need as an output which could be the field output to get you some kind of uh, contour plots etc or you can also ask for a history output which is more suitable for post processing somewhere else or for example you want to plot some graphs uh, history outputs are more expensive to do so i would only recommend those if you don't really need it then try to live with the field outputs in my opinion okay you can define interactions for example if you have two or more components so how do they interact with each other you can define different types of contact properties constraints etc and then you define your loading that how your loads and boundary conditions are acting on your parts so you can define those if you have any predefined field for example i have a component which had an initial temperature or a pressure of something and I can define as a predefined condition as well which is before the analysis starts and then you can add additional loads and boundary condition during the analysis for example once I have done everything then I just go back and I can run my job and that's how I can run the whole thing using this tree type model tree and the other way around is I can use these model of menus pull down menus and I can do the same through it so I can have parts I can go to module other module and I can play around with that I prefer using this environment on this side and in this case again I can do the same as I can do on the model tree using these module menus so I can start with the part I can create my part geometry I can define material properties for that then I can assemble them together I can define the steps for example if I'm going to do a static analysis or dynamic analysis or thermomechanical analysis I can define all the interactions between the components during in the assembly all the loads and boundary conditions are defined in the load module followed by the meshing once i've done the meshing i can then go to the job module and i can run them if i'm doing some kind of optimization which may might be in more advanced cases then i can do those as well to optimize that's their geometry or material parameters etc once i have run my job and i have submitted for solution and once and it's finished then i can go to my visualization module and i can visualize my results so this is how you really do in real case in real life if you change from one module to another module you will see these toolbars changing keep on changing and those toolbars are more relevant to that module 
as you move downwards. So I think the starting point would be I will give you a kind of a tutorial on how to make a simple geometry and how to run it in Abacus and that will make you th make things more clear what I'm trying to say here. Other than that, you can have many other toolbars here with buttons and again you can change those going into the viewport options and view options. So you can have different types of toolbars and everything here and so you can have more options here. So for example, if you want viewports, you can click on this and you will have a new toolbar here and you can fit it any way you want like this. Sort of that. So if I need two, two windows, I can just click on this and I will have two windows rather than having the one main window here which will be arranged vertically. You can have it horizontally, cascade or a single video. Similarly, these all these things, I will show you what, what their functions are and you can play around with them as you learn or go through your own modeling stuff. So let's do such in such a way that I will create a simple uh, cantilever beam maybe, which is having a kind of a point load at the end and it's completely fixed on one end and see how it behaves. So again, all the geometry dimensions, everything is arbitrary. So I'm going to just go randomly with everything and let's see what sort of results we produce out of it. So first thing is I'm in the part module, so I need to create the part geometry. That's what I'm going to do here. I'll name my part, for example, in this case, let's say Kanti Lever 1, for example, something like this. I'm going to, I can work with 2D, 3D. Again, these comes from the FE, FEA assumptions. If you can model something in 2D, which could be plain strain or plain stress. So again, you can go with that and it will save you a lot of time. But in this case, you're going to go with a 3D model, for example. You can also have deformable body, discrete rigid bodies, valerian, which is more relevant to fluids. So in this case, I'm going to go with a 3D object and I'm going to extrude it. Again, these geometrical things are very much the same as any other CAD model software like SolidWorks or Cartier or Ideas. So you can again look with, into that if you have some cutting experience. Depending on the model dimensions, you can select as approximate grid size and window size here. So in this case, it's 200. And now if you ask me if this 200 is millimeters, meters or inches, then in Abacus there are no units. So so you should be, our uh, user is responsible, is responsible for the unit. So if I'm making it in millimeters, for example, 200 millimeters, then all my other units for material properties, etc., should be consistent, consistent to that. So for example, my density will be in kilograms per millimeter cube and my stresses, for example, or elastic constants will be in Newton per millimeter square, just an, as an example. So let's keep it 200 and let's make a simple uh, kind of a cantilever beam. So I do that, I can draw this rectangular thing, for example, because I need to make a rectangle here and then I extrude it because I have selected the extrude option. So I can draw with a line or I can draw with a rectangle. So I'm gonna do with a rectangle thing. So let's say I start with a zero this is my zero zero and then I go up to let's say this point and I draw something like this so once I have done that now I have to give the thickness of this so let's try with 20 and see what happens how does it look I don't know what dimensions are here well in reality I should have all the dimensions and I use those coordinates here but in this case I'm just viewing blindly everything so let's see how it looks so when I do that I have this kind of plate, but in reality I need much smaller thickness, maybe some until this point. So maybe we can say five centimeters, five millimeters or something. So now I need to modify this. So what I will do, the easiest way for me is I will go to the model tree. You can see my part is there. So I will just go back and I'll say I need to modify my sketch here. So I go back and I say edit. And obviously this is fine. So I really don't want to do anything. I need to modify my extrude command so i go to my extrude command and now i say that it should be around five and once i do that you can see my shape has changed to this thing which is again more reasonable in my opinion rather than having a very big model and it will give us a lot of problems in terms of computational time so i have done part now i need to define the property so i go to my property module and you see now these things have changed as compared to part so the first thing is i need to tell abacus what material it has to be made up of. <coughs> so in that case, ma, I need to create a material. There is no predefined material model like any other FE software in Abacus. 
So you need to define your own. So I will say create material and then I will say, let's say I'm gonna make it of a steel or something. Since it's a static analysis, so I don't need a density, but if in reality, if I'm doing a dynamic analysis, I need to define density because this is gonna go into my inertial term where I have half of rho v dot square, u dot square. So mechanical properties, I need to define elastic properties. You can see there are many models available. You have to define firstly the elastic and in the elasticity you have elastic, elastic material, hyper elastic, hyper foams, etc. So again, this, there will be a full complete course on material modeling in Abacus and I will come back to that later. So let's say I'm gonna model everything elastic. You can define plasticity as well because metals have plasticity as well. So let's go with elastic. And in the elastic material, I am gonna select isotropic. This means my material properties are same irrespective of the direction of the loading. So there is no anisotropy involved. And I define the material gains model as for steel. I'm assuming it to be 210 gigapascals. Remember, gigapascals is exponent nine Newton per meter square, but I'm using units in millimeters. So it should be 210,000 Newton per millimeter squared. Poisson's ratio for metal generally is 0.3 or 3.3 so I'm just going to use that here. Once I have done that <coughs> I have I can press materials manager here and you see there is a material definition there. Though I have defined the material up because still doesn't know what is this made up of because I can have many materials created here and you need to assign each material to the relevant part if I have many components or parts here at the moment I have only one. So for that I need to create a section and I can do that <coughs> excuse me through this. So I do that and I will say let's say Kent for example Kent section. And then basically I just press continuous and I select material. And when I do that, now if I go to my section manager, I have a section there. I can create more material properties there and more sections here because I can have a component which can have many different materials as well. So I need different sections for that. Once I have all the sections, I can assign the section to each, each individual component or section. So I click on this and now it says, can you select a region or select a region to a, assign a section. So I select this and then press done. And now I will have all the list of sections. I have only cantilever section in this case. I do this and you will see the color has changed <coughs> changed so this means my material property has been assigned once i have defined the material properties and i have assigned it to the component this means abacus now knows what is the geometry of the part and what is the material of this component the next thing is i will assign i will start assembling all the components together in this case i have only one i do that and i have a component here Once I have done that, I can do different operations. I can create as many components or copies of this component. I can bring more components if I have more, and I can assemble them together as I like, as I do in any other CAD model. For the time being, I just keep it simple, and I'm just creating using this one. Now, next step, and it is about defining the steps and what type of analysis I'm gonna do. So in order to do that, I can go to Step Manager, and then I can say Create. I can also create, directly press create step button and I will get this window which is here, right? So I will say this is step number one and I want to do static analysis in this case. So I do that and it gives me this. So total time of simulation or time period is one second. So I'm gonna do the simulation for a duration of one second. This is elastic simulation, so it's time independent. So I'm just gonna use this time. Energy ohm option is very important because if you are using a non-linear effect and if you have very large displacements, then it's better to turn it on. If it's off, then your, your solver will struggle to converge if you have very large deformation. So I will keep it on for the time. Then you have to define the maximum number of increments. I can give it a value of 1000 or 1000 so that it can go up to that. Since the total time of simulation is point, uh, 1 second, so I will say that it start with an 0 0.1 at 0 0.1 and then the maximum increment should be 0.1 as well. So this means simulation will start at 0.0, then 0.1, 0.2, up to 1.0. So you will, I will have 10 increments there. This will give me a more equally interval 
solutions for each case. I press OK and now you see I have a step definition here. <coughs> Once I have done that, then I go to the next one, and which is about interactions. In this case, I have no interaction, so I will just skip that part for the time being. But when I go to the explicit problem in next tutorials, then I will explain that. So next is loads. In this case, we assume that we have kind of a load which is acting on this surface, and I would say let's apply some kind of thing force. You can apply concentrated force, moments. Uh, what do you call pressure which is per unit area or other types of loads which are here so for a time being i'm going to go with the concentrated force so i press continue here and now it's asking me which points you want to really apply a force so i'm going to say okay i want to apply a force at this point this point and at this point you can keep the shift pressed and then you can select multiple points. So I'm selecting all the four points here. You see, so all four, four points are red and I've selected those. And now when I click done, then I need to find out which component of force I have to apply. So for example, CF1, X is one in our case, Y is two and Z is three. So in this case, you can see my Y is along vertical axis. So I need to apply a force in Y direction and my positive y is upward, so I'm going to apply something in the downward direction. So let's say I give a value of minus 5. I'm just assuming all the values, so I don't know what, so what happens to the results because of that. So I just do that, and once I press OK, you will see some arrows pointing downwards, and this means the force has been applied. Now what I have to do is I have to fix the cantilever beam from the other side, which is this side. So better to rotate this, I can rotate my object from this. So I can just press my left mouse button and I can get this and then I can get rid of this. And now I apply boundary condition. So I say that I'm going to fix everything on this surf on this surface here. So I say create boundary condition, displacement boundary condition, and then I will select this whole surface. So what when I select done, then I can say that U1, which is the displacement in X direction u2 which is displaced in the y direction and u3 which is displaced in z direction should be zero and then i press ok and then you can see my boundary conditions are applied you see this these are the view ports so i can change my view along xy plane along xz plane along yz plane which is the longitudinal plane or isotropic isometric view which is this one I have defined my loads now. The next step is to create finite element mesh. So the easiest way is this is a rectangular part. You need to first select the each component one by one and mesh them to sing each time. So let's say you can have a global seed or you can have individual edge seeds. So I will go with the global one. It's a simple part. And now I have different options. You can see I can select a global size. If I press apply, so you can see the global size looks like this, which is very coarse. So maybe I will reduce the size and I say, okay, I need 0.5 or something. And when I press this, so you see I have more, more elements along all the edges. But my number of elements will be much larger. So I just do that. And then I go and I select the element type. So I will again select the component. And then I will say which type of element I'm going to use. So in this case, I'm doing a standard analysis, 3D stress analysis. I have an option of linear elements or quadratic elements again if you are more confused on this then please uh, have a look at the course on FEM on the channel so now I can have reduced integration in this case I will keep everything default for the time being and anything else I don't think we have need anything more than this so I just press ok once I have done that I go and I say mesh part and abracadabra I have my mesh but you see the mesh is very fine and there are 9000 elements so it's gonna take a very long time so I'm gonna maybe increase the seat size to say for example one and let's see what happens then so it will delete the mesh then I press mesh part again I press ok to mesh the part yes 
and I have much coarser mesh and now I have only 1000 elements which is still okay not bad for this kind of simple problem now once I have done everything I'm gonna go to my job on you I'll say okay man now you've done everything right so I want to run my first job which is can take whatever B okay. and then I press okay I don't need to have a space there so I say underscore so it doesn't need anything at all so I just say can deliver beam Oops. can deliver beam one and I just run it so now I have this window here and I will press I just use default for a time I just don't do anything with that and I now I have this now I can run the analysis in two ways I can write an input file and I can basically submit you know, through a command prompt or I can directly run it and submit it through here so in this case I will go with the default CE option that is submit through here so when I press submit button here then you see it says it's doing something and now it says job has been submitted for analysis I can go and now it says running so I go and monitor and I see what's happening to my job so monitor will bring up this kind of a screen and this will give me the status that now it has started so input file it processes the input file and then it runs the habitus standard analysis and it completed everything uh, without any warnings or errors you see so everything is fine outputs have been written for 10 increments because it was 0.1, 0.1, 0 0.1 increment as you remember so it has written it down data file gives you all the input related warnings and data details there was no warnings so everything was perfect message file gives you what happens during the iteration so these are all the convergence criteria that's using and then for each increment it gives you what was the total time what was the average force what are the largest force residual etc so all the convergence parameters which were found for each increment it gives you that kind of details and the status file gives you how the whole process has really progressed and you can see we gave a increment size of 0.1 so it has followed our command and it has given us like that once i have done that then I have record ever again and I have results so I will just press results and it will automatically take me to visualization mode so now I am in the visualization mode and I can easily see my results so I can basically say control plots and you can see how my stresses are really looking like you can see this is very small if you're not happy with this kind of thing you can go to viewport and you can say viewport annotation options the easiest and quickest way to change increase all these fonts is to select any one of those set label fonts and select all of these and increase the font to a bigger number so that you can see so now it's too big so I go back and I go maybe 24 so now at least it's visible for us so what you see is this gives me the file name you remember ODB is the output database you remember when you started the Abacus CAE was giving me an option to open a ODB so you can open this file directly from there as well it gives me the total step time what is the primary variable which is printed here and the scale factor so these are the V Mises stresses in this case and the stress value is around 34.33 and it is Newton per millimeter squared or megapascals because we define everything in millimeters and Newtons if I want to change something and I want to see what is the strains in this case then I can plot strains and these are the principal strains for example in my structure and if I want to see the strain components then I have to go here I can select let's say what is the strain in three direction or two directions so I can do that and I can play around with those as well and I can plot whatever I want in this case I can also have for example uh, displacements so my displacement should be maximum here because my, and this is fixed so it's zero this has a displacement of around 5.0.059 in this case so that's also really giving you that kind of thing other things you can do is for example I don't like the mesh to show again it's my choice so I go to this options common and I will say just show me the free edges and you see my mesh is gone and that looks better or clear if I don't like these control plots I can go to my uh, view option ODB display options 
and then I can play around with different types of things so for example I can basically uh, for example uh, sorry what I can do is so for example if you if you really want to do for example you go to control options here and you look at this kind of option and then you can play around with those, these kind of things so for example if I want to change what sort of thing should be plotted as a contour so I can change it to lines I can change it to pan change it to build which is not there ISO surfaces so you can see there are many different options generally normal ones are or standard ones are banded ones again you can have continuous so you don't have any bands but you it interpolates and gives you kind of a shade for different color which looks more than dandy or you know in a way so yeah or so you can play around with that you can increase the contour spacing you can change this and you can see how it changes so there are many different options again you can play around with that and see how it works for plotting stresses for a certain element i again have already have a video on that so please have a look at that so this is pretty much it and you can basically once you I like this image and you want to export it you can go to that file option menu print and then you can select the file option png for example you can basically normally abacus starts in temp i should have told you the start but you can change the working directory in, in the file menu and then you can let's say name it one dot something and it will basically introduce it will basically save this this screen here inside this image and you can reduce it you can increase the quality you don't want any decoration you can just unclick it and it will give you a kind of an image that you want for yeah so this is pretty much it i hope you got some idea on epic cae in this case but if you have any more questions then please get back to me and i will try to reply to you which could be related to abacus post processing or even during the modeling you, you are confused with something so thank you very much and i wish you all the best